What does it mean to take communion in an unworthy manner? I think this is quite important because sometimes people are very flippant um, in taking communion and not really looking into the depth of what it really means. It's a very important question that's derived from the text in 1 Corinthians 11, 26 to 29. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup in an unworthy manner shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man or woman examine him herself and so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For so he who eats and drinks judgment to himself, he does not judge the body rightly. There's much discussion about what it means to take the bread and the cup in an unworthy manner. There are different interpretations. And it could be that those taking communion elements needed to be fully aware of what they really represent, the sacrifice that Christ did for us, uh, and how we are redeemed from sin. Therefore, to participate in communion, while not understanding this, would be to take communion unworthily. Another possibility is that taking the supper willfully, unconfessed sin, would be an unworthy manner. The earlier text in 1 Corinthians 11 seems to suggest that taking an unworthy manner it seems to do while you have a problem with another Christian uh, with whom you have not reconciled. It's something that we don't always really consider, but it's quite a, quite a serious one. If you've got um, an offence uh, against another brother or sister, and, uh, we can really drink condemnation on ourselves. Another view is that some Corinthians were using the um, communion supper as an opportunity for self indulgence. Uh, which is why Paul mentioned about how some were drunk in verse 21. Another view is that both elements of bread and wine must be taken together. There's some churches that don't do that, they take one or the other. They're meant to be taken together. The final view of the person taking communion must be worthy in order to take it. But this view, however, is dangerous because no one is worthy to take communion supper. Our worthiness comes from Christ, not ourselves. So those that are just distributing the emblems, but they do so no purpose. So there's no shame that as the emblems are passed around, that they can be That you can, if you have any unforgiveness in your, in your mind, that you can let the emblems pass by. However, reading on, it will also explain that if you're in the process of dealing with sin, that you can still take communion. So, looking at it in context, the context of the, the verses seem to begin around verses 16 of 1 Corinthians 11. Paul mentions people who are contentious and there are, there are divisions among them in verse 17. <clears throat> he also mentions some people that are drunk in verse 21, as we mentioned. Uh, Paul also says in verse 22, do not have houses, do you not have houses in which you can eat or drink? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? In this I will not praise you. It is after this that Paul speaks more directly about communion and how it represents the body and the blood of Christ. In verse 26 he says, As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Paul relates the communion to the sacrifice of Christ and then says to examine oneself in verse 28. It seems most probable that Paul is telling people to examine their motives, make sure there is no dissension with, with other believers, to make the supper solemn. 
and that uh, they will uh, rightly understand that what it represents uh, with the sacrifice of Christ. Finally, many Christians do not feel worthy of taking communion because of their sin. But the Christians should realise that communion is for sinners. For Christians do as sinners. It is not that communion makes sinning okay. The Christians should always war against sin. The Christians should not withhold themselves from the table if they are trying to repent from the sins and struggling to gain victory but have not yet attained it. It is a struggle against sin that is the admission that we must depend upon Christ and His grace. In our struggle, we judge sin to be sin and war against it. It is precisely this struggle that is a vindication of our position with Christ and a manifestation of our need for communion as an act of dependence upon His work and grace. Could we all stand, please, and we'll take communion together? Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the body. We thank you, Father God, for this that we take as a representation of, of what you did on the cross for us in the forgiving of our sins. Let's see together. And Father, with this wine which represents your, your blood and the shedding of your blood, Father, for the forgiveness of all our sins, known and unknown, past, present and future. Father, we thank you, Lord, for that great sacrifice that you did for us in the cross. So we partake now. Thank you.